Okay, here is our ship. I would like to call it a ship at least. However, it's just a simple triangle on the screen. It does not respond to any keyboard input. If you remember, we're on a mission here to overhaul our MyGL window, our entire game, and break out some systems so that we have a more elegant design. So all we have right now is a triangle, and the triangle is due to my game telling the rendering system what to do, and the rendering system's not complete. We'll come back and visit this, but for now I'm quite happy that at least the triangle shows up and my game is in charge of the update loop instead of having the rendering system in charge of that. The next thing I want to do is make the triangle respond to user input, and that requires us building our ship. You may think, let's just throw together a class. I mean, that's what object-oriented programming we learn in our object-oriented programming uh, classes. <laughs> <laughs> they teach about making objects, they teach about inheritance, they teach you a little bit about composition, and, but they teach you more about inheritance because inheritance is really hard to understand and virtual polymorphism, virtual functions, that sort of thing, and you spend all that time learning about that and, and then you realize, wow, inheritance is cool and all, but that was hard to learn. And because it's hard to learn, you think, or we have a tendency to think, oh, we should use it everywhere. Okay, just because something's hard to learn doesn't mean it's the the right solution. In fact, generally if something is hard to learn, learn sometimes that means it's the wrong solution. I'm not advocating that uh, inheritance is, is necessarily always a bad thing, but I will say in this case there's a much more elegant design pattern we can use to build the sherp, ship, ship, sherper, ship and the lurper, and that's what we're going to do next. And so this, this I, I think you'll, I well, I hope you actually think this next part is pretty cool. Here is a tiny URL. If you go to tinyurl.com, you can make ugly long URLs into something a little bit more uh, digestible. If you go to tinyurl.com forward slash K-U-K-P-G-J-M, you will play the most epic game on the internet. It's called Burt's Bottle Caps, or you could just Google for Burt's Bottle Caps. <clears throat> Burt's one of my favorite characters on Sesame Street and it just so happens that they built a game and it's a really cool game. It'll teach you about Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are really simple to understand but you need to play the game uh, before moving on in this video or else you won't. It'll help you if you play the game first. So I'm going to wait. You go play the game for about 10 minutes and I'll sit here and wait while you do that. Do you think I'm really going to leave 10 minutes of dead space in one of my videos. <laughs> Pause the video, go play Burt's Bottle Caps, you gotta do that. Okay, here's hoping you played it. I'm gonna draw a couple circles. Alright, here is one circle. That's a circle, I promise. That is really a circle. Here is another circle. Oh! Yeah, okay. Maybe they're not circles, but you get the idea. Let me write here that the left circle represents all the behavior, data, that sort of thing of the ship and the circle, or the circle on the left does, and the circle on the right is the lurper. And we need some bottle caps. Let's, oops, let's make some bottle caps. So what kind of bottle caps should we make? We'll do them in black. What kind of behavior do you think these things would share versus independent? Let's let's put down all the behaviors that there could possibly be. There's uh, positional information. Okay, there is one bottle cap. Do black. And there's also I don't know. There's the yeah, positional, and there's also well velocity, right? And I vaguely remember the linear interpolation lerping movement. Okay, so I'll put that as lerping. That's the lerping behavior. Remember the ship we controlled with the keyboard, whereas the lerper kind of did its own kind of lerpy thing. Uh, there's rendering. Okay, need rendering behavior. And I'm trying to remember what other behaviors we had. There was uh, input, you know, responding to input. There was input behavior, like so. And I'm just, these black things on the bottom again are our bottle caps. Close that one up. And there's also the boundaries. You remember uh, responding to the boundaries? So boundary behavior. 
I'll just call that boundary for there. And I want to take these bottle caps and drag them into their respective uh, game objects. Okay. So first of all, ship or positional. We'll go left to right. Positional. Does the ship have positional information? Yes, it does. Does the lurper have positional information? Yes, it does. They both have a X, Y coordinate on the screen. So we need to drag this bottle cap into the intersection. This area in here is the intersection of the two game objects. If you think of streets where two streets cross, that makes an intersection. And the same idea here. We have two streets or two game objects. They intersect right here. And so both of them have positional information. We'll just put our positional bottle cap. Uh, I'll put it right here. Positional. And let me circle that. That's our bottle cap. We're done with this bottle cap. How about velocity? All right. Which game objects have velocity? Well, ship has a velocity, right? It moves around the screen, and how it gets that velocity is via the keyboard, but we really don't care as we, we can give it the velocity and that's good but lurper it has like a lurping speed but it doesn't necessarily have a velocity where we just kinda say go that way and roll at that that uh, speed per minute it kinda does but it doesn't we we do it differently and so so velocity is actually in this case it's specific to the ship right, and I'll put velocity up here velocity so I'm gonna drag this bottle cap up into the ship area and erase it from down here. And then lurping. Well, obviously, lurping behavior is specific to the lurper. All right, so I'll put the lurping. And the lurping is where it chases the different points and switches from point to point. We saw that in the OpenGL window. So we'll get rid of that. Rendering. Which game objects have to render or draw? Well, the ship does, and so does the lurper. So we'll put rendering here in the intersection again rendering and circle that and erase this which ones respond to input the lurper doesn't care about input only the ship cares about input so we'll put the input bottle cap over here and erase it from here and then boundaries well for now at least in our old game the lurper would lurp all over the boundaries it doesn't really care whereas the ship would respond to the boundaries and the velocity would adjust and we went through all that so I'm going to put the boundary detection response bottle cap here in the ship class alright that's not a very good bottle cap but there we go boundary and erase this one right here so if you're straight out of a object oriented programming class you think oh I know about objects now and inheritance this is I can see this James this is epic all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on my UML because UML is cool, and I'm gonna say game object up here. And they told me in, in school I'm gonna use UML all over the place. So let me start drawing my UML because UML is just so important. And yeah, hopefully you're sensing some sarcasm. Uh, UML has its place. It's a very deep, dark, scary place, uh, in my opinion. But that's a religious debate. Game object. What should go in a base class game object? That would be the base class for both a ship and a lurper. Hopefully if you understand object-oriented programming we take the intersection, the things that are in common. That's why we build inheritance trees is, is it allows us to factor out common functionality. And So we're going to put the positional information here, the positional data, and I call it position, but it should have been positional. And we'll do the rendering. Okay, They will both render. So rendering, very good. And then I'm going to make a class. Another one, look at me, I'm drawing UML. Hire me, I'm so awesome. I'm going to call this one ship. Okay, yeah, be careful how you say that. It's ship. And I actually don't like the black. I want, I want my blue. I'm trying to be consistent. As consistent as possible for you here. So we'll call this ship. And what goes in the ship? Well, we have velocity, input, and boundary. Uh, handling. So here we go. Here's the bottle caps. Velocity uh, input and boundary detection handling that sort of thing. And ship will inherit from game object. I can't remember if it's closed arrow, open arrow, or whatever. I really don't care. I think UML is for people that can't program. Um, 
Lurper. Let's build a Lurper. Lurper. Uh, green. 12 point. Lurper. Okay, what should go on the Lurper? Well, it's pretty straightforward. All it adds to the game object is the lurping functionality. So we'll put the lurping. And by lurping functionality, again, I just mean go to this dot, alpha 0 to 1. Go to this dot, alpha 0 to 1. That sort of thing. Uh, and Lurper is going to inherit from game object. So if you're straight out of an object-oriented programming class, you're thinking, yes, I'm a pro. I get this. Hire me. And then someone like me comes around to troll you a little bit and says, okay, okay, hot shot. I think you're so cool. Let's have some fun with you. I'm going to make another entity, and we'll call it enemy. All right, let's uh, be sure to use the same font, too. And let's make sure I'm in the draw the recording area. Put it right about here. Okay, enemy. All right, we're going to make an enemy class, or an enemy game object. All right, and so you get excited. Oh, yes, 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 I've, I've built this this system for it, it can handle it. Let's let's build our enemy class. All right, here is enemy. We'll put the red text in there for enemy. Enemy! An enemy is going to inherit from game object. Look at me, I'm an object-oriented programmer. I'm feeling so cool. All right, well, what bottle cap should go in enemy? Enemy already inherits position in rendering, and Yes, an enemy would have a position, and it would have rendering. I'm actually going to add another bottle cap. We'll call it AI. An enemy would have to have some sort of AI logic in there. Look at me drawing AI instead of typing AI. I'll type it over here for you, though. <coughs> we'll type AI. Okay, hopefully you're feeling pretty good about your object-oriented skills. But what other bottle caps would enemy need? Would it need to lerp? No. I mean, we could have an enemy lerp, but... Well, maybe. Maybe an enemy lurps and doesn't chase you. Maybe that's the AI. I don't know. Uh, but we'll say no for now. It does have positional and rendering, so that's good. We inherited that. Does it have anything from ship? Well, enemy is not going to respond from input or direct key input, so that's good. Enemy, though, would have a velocity, and its input's going to come from the AI, but it would ha also have to respond to velocity. It would have to have a velocity, and it would have to respond to boundary conditions. So if I draw the circle for the enemy, it's going to kind of look like something like uh, this. Okay, I know that's not a circle, but you get the idea. All right, the enemy needs all those things. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Velocity and boundary are sitting in the ship class, and the enemy needs it. So I think, oh... Oh, my object-oriented skills are not really what I thought they'd be. Uh, maybe I'll move velocity and boundary logic up to game object. Well, if you do that, all of a sudden the lurper now has velocity and boundary handling, and the lurper will try to lurp through a boundary if it wants to, but then all of a sudden it's going to get reflected somehow, or something's going to blow up. No, it's, it's, oh, well, that does. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take velocity and boundary, and we'll copy the code out of here and paste it down in the enemy class. Well, you've seen what happens when Jamie copies and pastes, and I'm going to assume that your copy and paste skills are about as good as mine, and so uh, that, that's that's not a good solution either. So, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I, my teacher said that object-oriented programming and inheritance and, and making classes and virtual functions was, was the best thing ever, and uh, it just failed me. Well... <laughs> Stay tuned. In the next video, I have something up my sleeve that's going to solve all of our problems.